Greetings folks! Welcome back to the Tractor Fella channel, where we know nothing about tractors. On today's episode, we're gonna take this diamond in the in the rough. On today's episode, we're gonna take this cubic zirconia in the rough, and we're gonna <laughs> give it a heck of a once-over. Will it run and will it drive? I don't know, but we're sure gonna try. Would you just look at this weird machine? This thing is awesome. <laughs> I went to a garage sale and I found this beast for a whopping $40. Now, is it worth 40 or 14? Uh, well, I'd leave that up to you, but I'm kind of leaning toward 14. I did some research online and found out this is a mini chopper made by a company called APC. So is that American Petroleum Company? Perhaps American Parts Company? Or maybe it's Armored Personnel Company. I don't know, but I couldn't not buy it. I mean, look at it. It's like a Harley mini bike. It's crazy. I mean, the dual wheels in the rear, pretty crazy. It has suspension in the rear. It has functioning suspension in the front. It has gauges on it. Ouch! I gotta figure out why I decided to hang this from the ceiling. Next, headlights, a horn, left and right turn signals, front and rear brakes, a fuel tank, an ignition, brake light, a headlight, and originally it had this cute little plastic hardly looking motor up here, which has since been removed. The actual engine that powers it is a two-stroke of some sorts. I, I have no idea what's going on with this thing, but I'm thoroughly excited. It's also had a extraordinarily rough life. You can see that a lot of stuff is broken. Primarily the turn signals on the front and the rear. It's got this cool little top hat guy here who's trying his best to peel off. Gas can is a plastic container underneath this cover. This is a functioning ignition switch that typically is mounted underneath. I'm not sure why it's up here. For the gauges, we have a battery gauge. We have a speedometer, also known as a speedometer, turn signal indicator, and high beam indicator. You guys, this is awesome. It is really awesome. So let's stop talking about it and let's start diving into it. Start with something easy. The chain does rotate, so that's a good thing. But let's go ahead and get her all taken care of. Let's go ahead and give the engine a bit of a once-over. Remove our spicy noodle there. I'm going straight to the 19 millimeter this time. Oh, we have a winner. Hey, I'm learning. What a great day. H and H. L7T. This plug looks fairly new overall. A little bit of gum on there. Will it spin? Oh yeah, it'll spin. Let's fire a little blaster down there. Because who doesn't like extra lubrication? Rip cord. Somebody used a hitch pin. I mean that's a good it's a good solid option, but I believe in the small engine toolkit, we have a ripcord somewhere. Oh, oh, okay, there's one. Do we have just a handle that's hanging out? Oh, man. Oh, this is a great day. We have plenty of ripcord on here. Most important tool in the garage. And we have the purple scissors of fury. Thank you, hitch pin. Double knot for ultra security. Oh yeah, that's not going anywhere. Nope. Oh, look at that. There it is, little black dog. Enjoying himself some nice warm blacktop. Oh, just taking a nap. And there he is, the psycho floppy eared shepherd. Poor boy. October 1st, it's a balmy 82 degrees out here. A little unseasonable, but I'm not going to complain. So I talked to the previous owner. He said he wasn't able to get it running, but he also didn't have a whole lot of small engine knowledge. I also have a very small amount of small engine knowledge. So this should be interesting. First thing I want to do, check for spark, because the wiring on this beast looks like it needs a little help. Pull some of this leafy stuff out of here. Make sure we pour it all into the cylinder. We'll blow it out. Oh, 
We'll set it right there. Ignition switch, which may not do anything at all. On. And turn out the lights. Getting close to Halloween, so be prepared to be scared. And we are off. Oh, yeah! Are you serious? We have all the spark. Well, my mind is completely garbled right now. I figured spark would be the hard part. Let's turn the ignition off and see if spark goes away. It does not, not at all. Well, that'll be a problem for the future. In the meantime, think you know what's coming up? Little throat spray. I'm just excited to see how this little machine sounds with those sweet duels back there. As per usual, starting fluid contains lubricant. That's not clean. Let's avoid getting all the particulates inside the engine. All right, who's excited? Might help if it goes into the carburetor. Here we go. Interesting. Do we have a choke on here preventing us from getting any airflow? I don't see a choke on here at all. It's possible the engine cover that was missing had the choke built into it. It smells like ether in here. That's a lot. Oh man. I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but I just am. All right, fuel tank appears to be empty. Sniff check. <laughs> oh, it's dexty. All right, so officially we have a Thompson's water seal tank here. We're gonna need to probably flush that out. But because I'm not going to right now, I'm gonna put some fresh gas in there. We're gonna pump that little bulbous and we're gonna see if we can get it to fire off of fuel. Get some 89 rec fuel in here, no ethanol. I see absolutely nothing coming down this ultra taut, ultra short fuel line. Maybe our primer bulbous will help. Oh. Okay, well we're purging out the old, mixing it with the new. Think it'll run? I'm not so sure, but we're gonna try. Although I don't know how to shut it off. Whatever. Are you serious? gosh I think we're super rich all right well I uh, I'm a bit on the shocked side right now let's crank this all the way in half one one and a half one and a half one and a half let's just go out one see if that makes a difference So my other theory is that this beautiful pipe here is clogged. What do you say we pop that off? Let's see what's inside. I can't believe this thing runs. In other news, Titan got skunked a couple days ago, again, for the fourth time in four years. Hercules is actually wise enough to uh, stay away from them. Titan just goes up and tries to eat them. That is doing absolutely nothing. And it's also a coarse thread bolt. There's another one here, one out of two. There she goes. What do you say we fire it up with no exhaust at all? I have absolutely zero plan what to do if this thing runs away, so we'll just let it plow into the Jolly Green Giant and it'll save us. It might be a little loud. Watch your ear balls. Nope. Okay, so it's reacting to that. Nope. So this thing is flooding out like crazy. Hey, you think somebody rebuilt it and used the wrong diaphragm? And the button's too large? 
I wouldn't know that from experience. Also, check out the holes that the uh, pipe is supposed to screw into. Those are a little bit blown out, just a little bit. Considering the fact that's supposed to kind of screw into there, there's one more theory, and that theory is that the muffler itself is plugged, or perhaps the uh, spark arrestor is plugged. So why don't we pop off the plastic cover, pop off the muffler, and yeah, take a look at it. Really? Can't get it in there. Okay, screwdriver it is. <laughs> I almost grabbed a regular screwdriver. What was I thinking? Same thing on the other side. We got a third one? We do not have a third one. Out we go. This is a sweet mixture of metric and standard. I have a feeling somebody else has done this stuff too. Hot? Not hot. Okay, there's another screw down here that I just found. Oh man, am I gonna have to use a real screwdriver? Got her. It turns out there's quite a few parts for this stuff on eBay. There are some mint turn signal lights out there for it. This thing is rather heavy. It's also full of oil. We have officially eliminated all of the exhaust. So if this doesn't do it, then we know we have some intake issues. Here we go, plug your ears. Nope. Well, through process of elimination, we are down to there. So, okay, no, that is a fuel line. That is either the supply or the return, one or the other. I thought maybe this was a choke that was actuated up in the handlebar area. So check this out. See that little guy right there? That's a starter button. This thing has an electric start. And I bet that bulbous mounted right here with the wire going into it, I bet that's an electric starter. How cool is that? This thing has all kinds of sweet secrets. Hose deformers. Ouch. My knuckle just exploded. Hopefully that's enough to uh, deform the hoses. I do not have a good pair of side cutters. So we'll just go ahead and cut it upstream. Oh! Oh, for goodness sake. Please stop. These hose deformers are not good. This is what happens when you have wobble pops at night and you go to work on your stuff. Maybe we can put these on a single line and it'll work. And go. No, not working. Hose deformers are useless. Oh. All right, well, that was predictable. Welcome back, folks. It is a new and lovely day. Let's pluck this beautiful carburetor off of here and see what we can find. And there she be. Nice and easy removal. Oh, well, check that out. It's a slide. That is cool. I can't say I've seen that before. Well, obviously, because I've seen very little, but that's pretty awesome. So, what's the best way to take that off? Looks like we have an O-ring on the other side. Maybe we can slide the cable out of here and disengage it. Disengage? Maybe release is a better word? And there it is. Ah, how cool is that? All right, let's go to our carburation station. And here we are. So, our bulbous is full of fuel. Let's go ahead and pump that out of there. Because heaven forbid we would make a mess. All right, well, let's take this out. Ouch. That's a long little guy, isn't it? Pretty cool. Got a little bit of a rubber seal right here. Still feels good. Still looks pretty good. The tip doesn't look bad either. Let's give it a little twist and a tickle. Good to go. <laughs> Who knew I could have just done that in the first place? Oh my gosh. Don't drink Wobble Pops while you're working on your stuff.
<laughs> it bears your judgment. All right, let's get a screwdriver. Let's start with the bulbous. Okay, there's our check valve for the primer. That seems extraordinarily wet. I feel like it should not be that wet. However, the good news is that it's soft. Like I said, the other possibility is that the button on the other side of this diaphragm is too big and it's holding open our needle, allowing way too much fuel in there. Well, I guess we can just gently explore. Okay. That looks really good, actually. It's not permanently deformed. Okay, let's keep going. Here she comes. That is a massive button. Not too sure. Maybe we have some dirt intrusion down in our needle there. Ooh, we got a click on that one. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Gently. Wonder if someone tried to rebuild this. Not bad. There's a little bit of a line in it. Dirty, for sure. See our little dark marks there? That's better. That doesn't want to come off, so I'm not entirely sure I want to take it off. I suppose we could pop this off and see what's underneath. I may regret this in the future. And by future, I mean immediately. All right, so this tucks in right like so. Oh wow, what a nice machine surface. Cool. Perhaps we can just take the plastic off and see what's underneath. There we go. Oh, it's clean. That's very clean. We're just gonna leave that right there. Give her a little blast of carb cleaner. Oh, it came out for sure. <laughs> came right out of here. So let's go this way. Okay, comes up through there, comes up through there. Probably didn't see that in there. Comes up through there. Oh, hope everyone wore their safety gargles today. So this looks good overall. I don't know what this is, but let's spray it anyway. It goes somewhere. So that's all clear and free and happy. Oh, well, I don't really need to spray that, do I? <laughs> I guess I don't need to spray the inlet either, because that's clear. I don't know what that does, but let's spray it with something. Oh, yeah, clear. How about this little guy? No, that's the screw hole. <laughs> so that leaves the big question. Where is our problem? Does our problem lie here? I mean, that button is huge. It's a big nip. So I'm thinking we have one of two possibilities. One, the nip is too big. Second possibility is that our needle, as we noticed, had a lot of dirt and debris on it, so possibly it wasn't sealing, allowing a ton of fuel to come through here. Other possibility, this little guy needs to be adjusted. However, that seems to be fairly unlikely. You can see it's definitely made its mark on this little rocker here. Hmm. Is that just used for the purpose of atomization? Kind of like a metering device? Oh, I wonder if that's out of adjustment. Because not only does this open, it moves upward and causes that needle to come out of this jet here. Is that even adjustable? Because if that's the case, it could be that this is set way too high. See what I mean? See how the gap between the rotating drum there and the plastic housing that I'm touching shrinks? So as we allow more air to come in, we're also in essence, moving the location of this little brass pin 
inside of this feed tube. So is that even adjustable? It doesn't look like it. it. looks like it's a fixed setting. Maybe a spacer that allows you to change how much it sticks up, or maybe not, I don't know. Let's start with the seat and needle. We cleaned up the needle. I need to get some Q-tips, clean up the seat. Replenish complete. We'll just use a little W on here. W is a good cleaner. Mm, not dirty. That or I didn't get down there. <laughs> That's more likely the issue is that I didn't actually get in the hole. Oh, jeez. Well, that scared the beans out of me. All right, that's all nice and clean. That's all nice and clean. I'm gonna do one more adjustment. And bend that guy ever so slightly. I know, scientifically, you're only supposed to make one change at a time. Well, we're making two. All right, let's put it back together and watch it fail. Okay, let's go install it. And then we'll figure out what to do about the fuel lines that I decided to cut. Let's get our cable back on here in some way, shape, or form. Uh, that went way easier than I thought it should. Well, good news, there's plenty of extra line here. So I was able to just give it a tug. Unfortunately, this line is fairly hardened up. So we all know that we're just gonna have to replace it anyway. I'm not upset that I cut it. Oh, jeez. That is extremely small for this application. Well, looks like we might need to do fuel lines. Yay! It's just what I wanted to do right now. <sighs> well, through a little magic and wizardry, I was able to reconnect those. They'll probably stay on for about six or seven vibrations and then pop off. Cross your fingers, folks. I'm hoping for the best. We are getting a prime. Ignition switch does nothing. Let's give it an encouragement shot. Nada. I'm gonna have to think about this for a minute. I've never tried this before, but let's, uh, let's try to lean out the situation. Involuntary supercharger. Okay. So when I add air, it's actually leaning it out. You think that fuel line's too small? And it's not getting enough fuel now? Because I've noticed the smoke has gone away, but if it were too lean, hmm. I believe there are two bolts back here. We pop those out and it should give us access to lifting up the seat. Let's put this poor little guy back where it's supposed to go. Hey, there we go. There's our seat. Okay, got a piece of plastic, piece of rubber for whatever reason. And there's our bolts. There are supposed to be screws here to hold the cover in place, but they go. So we'll go ahead and take that out. And then supposedly this comes off. Now, as far as this ignition switch, I'm not fully understanding why it's been put on top. Because how am I supposed to get the freaking thing off? Unless there's a way to decouple it down below, which there is. There's a white connector over here that I will show you momentarily.
Okay. Oh, that's that's good for the paint. It is pristine. There's the connector. There's the receiving end. So we could put this back where it's supposed to go, even though we know it doesn't do anything. If I had to guess, the coil is probably unplugged from its kill wire, which is why it continues to run even when it doesn't need to run. Oh man, we got all kinds of stuff going on down here. It all looks, actually it all looks good, and it all looks intact. Does this have electronic ignition in some way, shape, or form? And is part of the problem a module somewhere not giving us what we need? This is getting deep. How old is this battery? No idea. Do these come off? No. Nope. That's probably the original battery from the factory. Okay. So I have another 12 volt battery here for a power wheel. This is a 12 volt 7 amp hour. This is uh, essentially a 12 volt 5 amp hour. I wonder if we plug it in, if it'll make a difference. But I can't imagine it would require battery signal to run properly. Let's not get too distracted. Let's work on the fuel lines first. Let's pinch off our lines down below. So the return line is about the right size because the barb on the carburetor is fairly small. The supply line, on the other hand, looks like it needs to be significantly larger. We'll go ahead and just pull this right out of the grommet. Easy. Now the second one, we're gonna have to pull out the top because it has a weighted filter on it. So, let's pull the line out this way first, find our way to the filter, which looks pretty good, to be honest. <laughs> There she is. There's our weighted filter, just like you'd see pretty much in any two-stroke. We're gonna wanna save that. And it's broken. Oh, that sucks. Oh well. So the supply line has a fairly big nip on it. Oh, they're all about the same, although this one might be too thick to go through the grommet. This one looks pretty decent. And it fits. Okay, well, looks like we're going with this one. I'll just have to order a new freaking weighted filter. I'd like to route it somewhere nice, like up here along the frame. So we're just gonna leave a bunch of extra. I'm gonna take it up to the tank, and give ourselves about enough to go to the very bottom. So that should be pretty darn good, and that is a lot of fuel line. Do we want that much fuel line? Mm, yeah, yeah, I think so. Purple scissors of fury, do it at an angle. Easier to get through. There's our grommet on the back, and that guy goes right in there. We are officially in the fluid. Take this little guy. I'm gonna run it up just like I did the other one, give ourselves lots of extra line. But this one does not need to be submerged. First, we're going to verify that. And we're going to verify that by using the primer and making sure the return line is this side. You can see it squirting right back into the tank. Okay, so that's good. We'll give ourselves just enough where it curls down and it'll go right back into the tank. Pluck that little guy in there, right back into his home. Now we have new fuel lines. Is this going to fix our problem? Most likely not. I'm curious if there's something electronically going on, if there's a module somewhere that's telling us not to accelerate, I don't know. Take 30. I wonder if this starts without the ignition switch plugged in at all. Not that this works.
It's a new bike stand. It's my own personal patent. A couple of things. One, we know it's electronic. Two, the key is backward. I switched it to the counterclockwise position, and that's when it took off. I turn it to the clockwise position, and it's like it's trying to kill it, but it won't. That's interesting. That may also account for the hard startability as well. Let's send it. Now I lost my freaking screwdriver. Well, we'll just get a new one. Here we go. Another issue I'm having now is that it's got like a rev limiter on it. There's a very strong possibility that this thing wants some voltage other than what the engine produces in order to uh, run properly. So, so why don't we hook up our power wheel battery to it and see if that makes a difference. Something else I noticed earlier is that our little fuse here, down, she gone. No information on what size, however, I did some research online that said use a 10 amp fuse. Welcome back, folks. It's a couple weeks later. Got all sorts of sicknesses going on. It's been a whole lot of fun. Thankfully, I had that backup video with the all-turn plastic welder last week. Hopefully, that kept some of you occupied. Anyway, I haven't touched this beautiful little chopper for a couple weeks, so uh, got a little digging to do as to why we have a rev limiter and why the kill switch doesn't work and it's completely backward. But I think I have a couple of ideas. Let's go take a look. Turns out there's a whole forum out there about pit bikes and mini bikes, and they talked about ignition wiring. First thing I noticed, this is definitely not the original ignition switch. It still has the blue protective plastic over the top here. There ain't no way that little guy is fitting in there, so we're either going to modify this case or we're going to relocate the ignition switch or make the ignition switch not existent. So the first thing I noticed, we have this connection here, right? We got a red down here, but a red up here. We got a white and black over here, but we got a white and black down here. We have a green that lines up, that's exciting. So I'm thinking maybe we should switch all these pins around. The cool part is I should be able to put, push those little tabs in and pull all these pins out and put them in exactly where I want them. So these little teeny tabs, pretty sure you just push it down. Should be able to pull that wire right out and pull. Oh, look at that. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pull all these out and we're gonna manually connect them one by one in here. And that way I'm not constantly trying to reseat these pins. Okay, see you in a second. Here we go. Red to red, black to black, black and white to black and white, and green to green. What do you say? You wanna to try to fire it up with the key in the actual on position? Let's see how she goes. Key is in the on position. We just need a functioning choke. <laughs> don't you love it when it's something like that? I don't want to jinx it yet. Yeah, okay. Switch is definitely good to go. How cool is that? This thing has way more functions that work than I thought it would. I'm tired of blowing my ears out. Let's get the muffler back on there. All right, so I went ahead, got the muffler back on, so we stopped blowing out our ears. I repinned the connector here so it's good to go. I've determined that this is our flasher for the turn signals. I've determined that this is our starter solenoid 
because the wire runs down to the bulbous on the other side of the engine. Boop! Right there. So I believe this is our control module. My first theory is that the control module is bad, but we're not going to go replace it right away. I wonder if I disconnect the battery if it'll even run. I wonder if it requires some sort of storage. All right, we're going to do a few tests. Sorry, I'm, I'm just jabbering. I'm trying to talk through this in my head. First test we're going to do, we're going to replace this fuse. The fuse probably blew because the ignition switch was wired incorrectly. I read on that forum that someone bought a new ignition switch, plugged it in, and it immediately popped the fuse when they turned on power. So let's replace the fuse first and see if that makes a difference in our running condition. And I just so happen to have purchased a pile of 10 amp fuses. Cross your fingers. Oh yeah, like it was made for it. <laughs> Probably because it was made for it. Fingers crossed. Ignition on. I don't know about you, but I'm confused, A-H. Okay, buddy. They tell me I don't play with you enough. Hercules, be nice. Hercules, Herc, get off. Little dominant meatball. Drop it. Drop, drop. Good boy. Here we go. All right, so what did we fix? Why is it suddenly? So I unplugged whatever this control module is. I unplugged the battery. I leaned up the mixture a lot. One, oh geez, it's barely even out. It's out like a quarter turn. I'm telling you, that button is the wrong size and this thing's flooding out. First of all, did our fuse survive? The fuse survived, okay? So let's re- What just happened? Are you kidding me? You've gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I threaded the cat back in and the back of the fuse holder blew out. Unbelievable. Why doesn't this machine like me? There's the back of the fuse holder. There's the wire that goes in there. And there's the little piece of plastic that broke off that held the whole thing together. How ridiculous is that? Crisis averted. Just wrap tape around this, <laughs> the frame to hold it in place for now. Because that's all we can do. Let's go back through it. I'm going to plug in the control module first. We'll fire it up, see if it runs the same. And then we'll plug the battery in. Here we go. Let's plug in the module. get a carb kit for this thing it'll be rocking I almost forgot look at these babies picked up these fuel filters from HIPAA the hippopotamus of engines they appear to be steel or some type of metal so they're nice and heavy let's go ahead and put one on there we go how nice is that 
They're pretty inexpensive too. Put the price tag somewhere around here. Most important tool in the garage. Oh, I gotta cut the uh, cut the end off there. Appropriate cutting surface for the job. Sorry, I kicked you. This knife is as sharp as I am. Oh yeah, nice fit. Back to your home. We are down there at the very bottom, ready to go. So as I've mentioned before, I have this little battery down here for a power wheel. And I have the appropriate size jumper cables for a battery of this size. Well, you know what they say. If it fits, it ships. Okay. Our little button on the bottom here. Maybe we need ignition first. No, oh, it's already on. Brake switch. There's also the possibility that the jumper cables are not good. As I ran into some strange behavior with these cables before, let's try this brake. No, how about this brake? No, do we have any power whatsoever with that battery? No, we do not. No headlights, no horn. Let's get cables that are a little more appropriate, shall we? Borrowed the wires from my Fluke multimeter. And we're going to alligator clip. And we're going to fully disconnect this old battery because it may also be just sucking the amperage out of this other battery. Positive is on this side. Let's see if we can just, oh yeah. We'll just cram it right in there. Negative to the ground side. I can see exposed electrode in there, so that should, should conduct electricity. Uh, let's see here. Key switch on. It's already on. Oh, we do have a battery meter. Sweet. All right, horn. <laughs> oh, geez, there's backlight on these gauges. Okay, I gotta show you guys this stuff. This is thrilling. All right, here we go. So. You got this cute little battery gauge. It says we have 12 volts. Let's turn on the headlights, shall we? Look at that. Just look at it. Blinkers. Oh, what the hell was... Are you kidding me? It plays a tone when your blinker's on? Oh, that's adorable. Let's turn the headlights off. Okay, here comes the big test. No, no start. Is there a brake switch somewhere? Squeeze this brake. Oh, are you serious? I gotta click. Uh oh, did it pop the fuse? Nope, I just lost connection. All right, I'm putting you in the stand. This is getting way too exciting. So I don't wanna burn up my leads <laughs> for my meter because they're not cheap, but I'd like to try again. So left brake, switch. It does, it works. Holy cow, everything works on this machine. Oh my gosh, this is great. Every day. Is it goofy that I got a little bit of, little bit of goosebumps when I found out that everything works on that? Yeah, maybe a little bit. It's not like we're talking about a 56 Chevy or something like that. I hate to say it, but that's gonna be it for part one. We're gonna do another part on this lovely little glorified scooter back here. He looks so pathetic right now. Buddy, are you okay? You gonna be okay? Okay, I thought so. <laughs> Hopefully in the next video we can tighten some things up. The steering's a bit wobbly, the wheels are a bit wobbly, everything's a bit wobbly. Hopefully we can get a carb kit for it sooner than later, get it running, driving, make it awesome. If you're interested in that, stay tuned. Hit the like and subscribe button. Oh, it just feels so weird saying that. Like and subscribe if you want to see the next episode. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I almost forgot. If in the future you find yourself super bored and super desperate to watch something on YouTube, come on over. We'll have more adventures. High five.